Let me read to you a passage from the second chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 22 to 35. It's the Gospel for the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. St. Luke writes, When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took the child Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's mother and father marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. That's from Luke chapter 2 verses 22 to 35 for the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. And so we are led to think of Simeon, the example of Simeon. Let me begin this way. Imagine an unknown soldier who is part of Napoleon Bonaparte's Grande Armée, his grand, his great army. Our unknown soldier has his wife and children back on his tiny farm in the vicinity of Rouen, France. All he really wants is to see them again. To see them again. It is 1812 and on the 23rd of June the huge army enters Poland heading for Russia. Within a few days of crossing the Nyman, the Nyman River, several soldiers begin to develop high fevers and rashes on their bodies. Typhus has broken out in the Grande Armée and just one month into the campaign Napoleon has lost thousands of his soldiers to typhus and dysentery. Our unknown soldier longs to see his family. The Battle of Borodino follows and Napoleon enters Moscow with his army very tired. And Moscow, deserted, is set ablaze by guerrilla Russians. The retreat begins within a month. Russians harass the, de the desperate French force as they make their way back trying to escape the winter. Our unknown soldier is among them, longing to see his wife again. The Grand Armée is virtually destroyed by the weather, by disease and by the pursuing Russians and Napoleon's reputation of invincibility is shattered. But our interest is in the unknown soldier. Miraculously, he survives the terrible ordeal and gets home to Rouen to see his wife and children. Think of him and of what has become the focus and goal of his life which is 
to see his family once more, to see them. Well, let him be an emblem of the goal of life. He wanted to see his wife and children. This meant that he wanted to see and be with them in a life of final, settled communion. Is the goal of life to get a lot of money? If so, what then? This cannot be the goal because manifestly it cannot be a source of true happiness. Is the goal of life to get to the top of power, which was what Napoleon wanted? If so, what then? The goal of life is to attain something like what that unknown soldier wished to attain. He wanted to see his family again. That word, see, which our soldier repeated in his longing heart, meant being with his wife and family and working for them in circumstances of settled communion. That physical sight was a symbol and means of his heart's sight of the object of his love. Man's heart longs to see that for which it yearns. And this seeing by the heart is its presence and communion with the object of its love. It is the goal of life. In our Gospel that I've read earlier, the Messiah is brought into the temple of the Lord, and with that we are introduced to a figure who may be considered as quintessentially a saint of the Old Testament. Holy Simeon appears on the scene led by the Holy Spirit. He has grasped the kernel of what we might call Old Testament religion and the pivotal place of the promise of a Messiah. His life has for its focus the hope of seeing him, of seeing the Christ, and in this he may be said to express the ideal of the people of God. As we heard, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. This is the true spirit, the true hope of revealed religion prior to Jesus Christ. And it was the lack of this which plagued so many when the Messiah came. Simeon's whole being longed to see him. And in this he is a symbol of the true son of Abraham. Our Lord in one of his confrontations with his enemies of the temple, the temple aristocracy, said, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. John chapter 8 verse 56. Simeon, like Abraham his father in faith, rejoiced to see the day of the Messiah. Our Lord on one occasion said to his disciples that, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Matthew chapter 13, verse 16 to 17. The longing of the scriptures was to see and to hear the Messiah. It was because so many were found not to have this longing that our Lord persisted in speaking to them in parables only. And without the explanation he gave to his disciples, as he said to his disciples, with them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you shall indeed hear but never understand, and you shall indeed see but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their eyes they have closed. Matthew chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Seeing Christ was the goal of Simeon's life. Not only is Simeon an image of the spirit of revealed religion prior to Jesus Christ, but he is a model for all of us. Life's goal is to see God, the God who became man in the person of Jesus Christ. Our heart longs to see God, which is to say our heart longs to see Jesus Christ, our way, our truth and our life, as Simeon longed to see him. 
this seeing of Jesus Christ, our God, our brother and our Redeemer, is that seeing which is the arrival at full and final communion with him in heaven. A communion which is begun, established and brought to a height and a depth during this life. Seeing Christ is the goal of life.